Good day, this is Miss Mumsy, and I'm going to be reading to you Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan. This book was illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. Some of the account is imagined. We don't know if the sequence of events during the months of May and June 1950, when Jackson Pollock painted Lavender Mist, was exactly as we have described it, but we do have many first-hand reports about the summer when he made so many of his great paintings. His life in the springs and the way he dressed, the way he talked and walked, and most important, the way he painted. And on these, we have based our story. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint-splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in from Gardener's Bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and lavender, sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing, sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Kaka, the crow he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Gip, runs in circles, demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide, sandy beach. But Jackson turns and keeps going. The gray-weathered barn used to be filled with rusted machinery, old fishing gear, and broken tools. Now it has, it is his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall, not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his painting to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up, flat as the marshland behind his house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover their canvas with a base coat of white, not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stain of stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor. Not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits, surrounded by the cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases, waiting. At last he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrupy paint. Slowly he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush. Working toward the middle, sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush, he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make long, longer and longer lines. I want to keep it going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he feels exhausted and used up. His inspiration, gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper, his mind filled with the thoughts about the wet painting 
back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, studying his work. But he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks to the beach, past the sandy marshes and the tall sparsier grass and the waves that in the breeze. And he spends hours sitting on the grassy dune watching the gulls. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the pattern of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come and the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas, coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue-black meet. Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory, swish and swish and again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands on the wet paint, and there it stays. Nails, tacks become a part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky paint-stained hands. One, then two handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops and pools of paint paws. Paint, paint, and more paint, dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches. But his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. Some people will be shocked when they see what he created. Some angry. Some confused. Some excited. Some filled with a happiness they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree Jackson Pollock is doing something original, painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. This picture is number one, 1950, Lavender Mist. It's in the National Gallery of Art, Washington, D.C. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford he digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. It will take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Jackson sits silent, staring at the blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting Soon he will dip his brush in a can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. Thanks for listening.